Message to all souls and lightworkers. From Patrick H. Bellringer. Ones must use and have the wisdom of discernment in order to realize and uncover the deceptions foisted upon the masses to stop you from learning and understanding the truth. People of the Lie, Reincarnation. By Patrick H. Bellringer. For centuries man has debated the concept of reincarnation. Reincarnation is the coming again of your God spirit or soul within another physical body in another lifetime. To incarnate is to manifest in physical form. We are spiritual beings, who have taken on a physical body to experience in third dimension at this time. There is no debate over reincarnation, if one believes what Isu, Jesus, Emmanuel taught his disciples 2000 years ago. He taught that every human being created by God received a portion or fragment of God's spirit, which is known as the soul. To be truly free individuals, we were also given a free will to choose between right and wrong. Without a free will we would be nothing more than robots or puppets on a string. Our task as human beings is to learn the laws of God and the laws of creation, and then by free will choice choose to live them to perfection to become one with God and the creation. Every human being has been given the ability to determine right from wrong. This means we, through our conscience, can determine good and evil. With our free will we can then choose between good and evil. Our goal is to always choose good in order to perfect our God spirit, soul, to the point of again becoming one with the spirit of God and the creation in perfection and harmony. To do this we must learn truth. Truth involves the laws of God and the creation. These laws are also known as the laws of balance. As we learn to choose wisely good over evil, we learn wisdom. Our goal is to always choose wisely so that we grow in soul perfection. Gradually, we learn the truth of the laws of balance and grow in knowledge. As we learn to choose good over evil and follow those laws in daily living, we grow in wisdom, and thus, in soul perfection. It is impossible for one to gain the knowledge of truth, to grow in the wisdom of right choices, and to complete all of one's lessons to the point of soul perfection in a single physical life stream. Therefore, our God Spirit must return again and again over many life streams within human physical form to continue the task of soul perfection. This repeating incarnation of one's soul is one's reincarnation. So, we see that reincarnation is necessary for one to complete the task of our God Spirit becoming one again with God and the creation. We have all lived many life streams either on planet Earth or on some other planet. Each time we reincarnate, our soul perfection starts where we left off in the previous life stream. This point is always determined by our previous life stream choices. The one major problem we face each time we reincarnate is that we have no memory of our past life streams. The physical plane, as we experience it, is a third dimensional plane. At the end of any given life stream, our soul goes to the astral plane where our memory is restored to us. There we judge ourselves according to the laws of God and creation and decide the lessons we have yet to learn. If we have not learned all our lessons in soul perfection, we then return again to the schoolroom of third dimension without memory to learn them. Our common enemy, Satan, knows about and fully understands the meaning of reincarnation. He knows that this life is but a passing experience and that there is life experience after this one. He, too, has a free will. 
He was known as Lucifer of the Lighted Realms, the Bright and Morning Star, and he chose unwisely to attempt to become God. This caused great imbalance and disharmony within the Lighted Realms, which lowered the frequencies of Lucifer and his Dark Brotherhood to the point of great discomfort. Thus, he chose to leave the Lighted Realms. After causing much destruction in the cosmos on other planets, he was finally banned by God Aten of Light to live on planet Earth as his jail planet. Lucifer was then given the name Satan, meaning adversary, by God Aten. Satan knows, that through the knowledge of the truth of reincarnation, we will want to perfect our souls in order to move to fifth dimension and leave planet Earth. Satan does not want that to happen because his goal is to trick us into believing his lie. He wants us to choose to join his forces of evil, so that one day he can again challenge God. Satan's goal is not only to take control of our world but also of the entire universe. Therefore, Satan has planned carefully to bury truth and especially the truth of reincarnation. He cannot afford to let us have the knowledge of how to escape his clutches. He needs troops for his army of evil intent. Most of the people of Isu, Jesus, Emmanuel's day chose not to accept his teachings. Isu, Jesus, Emmanuel clearly taught reincarnation. From the very beginning Satan's troops, starting with the Pharisees and even the early Christian disciples, altered Isu's teachings to suit their own needs. The accepted writings of Christianity were collected and canonized at the Council of Nicaea in 323 AD. Isu's teachings on reincarnation remained intact for nearly 500 years. Finally, at the Second Council of Constantinople in 525 AD, the canonized writings of Christianity were sanitized of most references to reincarnation. Thus, Satan skillfully buried the truth of reincarnation, and the Christian Church has faithfully perpetrated that lie ever since. Other people have not been so ignorant concerning reincarnation, as is evidenced by the knowledge of the natives of both India and of North America. Satan has used Christianity as one of the master plans to deceive us. Christianity has tricked us into believing that we do not have to work at soul perfection, but that the blood of their Messiah, one renamed Jesus Christ, magically removes our sins. The satanic myth continues in that those who have been saved will at the magic moment be whisked away from this evil place by the Christ, who comes floating back to earth in the clouds. Thinking that someone else does it for you, one makes no progress in soul perfection. The result is for one's soul to stay lifetime after lifetime on the wheel of reincarnations. Satan also uses self-punishment to trick us. Satan encourages self-punishment for our errors and past sins. The cause of our problem is believing this lie. The effect is that we allow our ego to be altered. We believe the Antichrist, Satan, that we are either inferior or superior to other people. This results in the rejection of our true being, for God has created all human beings equal. This gives us a sense of unworthiness to really be our true self to live freely without such feelings of inferiority or superiority. Our altered ego feelings of inferiority superiority may then be expressed in such ways as shame, resentment, helplessness, depression, envy and self-doubt. They may be lust, greed, hatred and jealousy. They may be expressed in impatience which leads to frustration or even in illness and disease which leads to the death wish of the body.
Because we believe in the lie of self-punishment and do not accomplish soul growth, our immortal God spirit again becomes locked into the wheel of reincarnations. And lifetime after lifetime our soul cycles through human forms with little perfection of the soul. Reincarnation and soul growth are inseparable. Our rate of soul perfection determines the number of life streams necessary to reach perfection and become one with God and creation. Of all dimensions the third dimension of physical human experience grants us the best lessons for challenge and perfection of our creative spirit within. Now is the most fantastic time for soul growth in all the history of planet Earth. The potential for soul growth is greatest when a celestial planet moves into its fifth dimension. Planet Earth is now at that point in its evolution. Third dimensional human beings must now leave this Earth. We are at the culmination of all of our previous life streams on this planet, and we have the greatest potential for soul growth at this time. In the lighted realms this opportunity for such potential soul growth occurs only when a planet graduates out of the third dimension. Soul growth never remains constant, that is, it never stands still. In soul perfection we are constantly moving either forward or backward. If in a given life stream we choose truth, in the next life stream it will be far easier for us to find and choose truth again. Should we choose the lie of Satan, in the next life stream it will be far harder for us to find and choose truth again. It is possible for one to continually regress in soul perfection so that the flickering light of the soul is all but extinguished. One may be required by his God spirit to go back and start over as a caveman to work on soul perfection. Should that occur, one could continue as a caveman without memory for thousands of years on the wheel of reincarnations. Reincarnation is truth. The earth is nothing more than a schoolroom where we learn our lessons and prepare for our next place and experience. Our destiny is perfection of our God spirit, of our soul within. We must strive for perfect love that is pure and without conditions, and its fire will burn and cleanse all that is unclean and evil in its path. We must work and grow spiritually or we will repeat our grades in another place in another schoolroom until such time that we have learned our lessons. Reincarnation is probably the most basic tenet of truth for us to learn at this time, for it answers our questions about our past, our present, and our future. This is why Satan very quickly removed any teaching about reincarnation from Master Teacher, Isu, Jesus, Emmanuel's teachings. Reincarnation is an elementary lesson, and unless we fully understand its meaning, we shall have great difficulty with our future lessons in soul growth. Whether we accept reincarnation as a fact of life or not, most certainly, will determine both our soul progression and our destiny. We are but fragments of the whole. By our free will we decide how quickly we will learn our future lessons in soul perfection and find complete harmony and balance, and again re. Join the one creator God Aten of light and the creation and live in complete love and harmony and peace with all of creation. Ponder this most carefully. Resource, The Phoenix Journals. The Phoenix Journal contact newspaper archive site is at http colon slash slash www.fourwinds10.com the Bellringer writings are at http colon slash slash www.fourwinds10.com Bellringer at fourwinds10.com
Note, the above links, as well as additional links to the recommended starting set of Phoenix journals can be found in the description section of this video. Please share, like and subscribe. Thank you for your support, in love and light. To the new readers and listeners, you may be asking, what are the Phoenix journals? The Phoenix Journals are intended as a real-time commentary on current events, how current events relate to past events and the relationships of both to the physical and spiritual destinies of mankind in truth. They are the record of the birthing and early days of the Phoenix, which is of course the symbol of transformation. The phoenix is also known as the thunderbird and variations thereof in the oral traditions of indigenous people throughout the world. The age of Egypt drew to a close and a transition into a literal new unprecedented age is in progress. For current and future generations, the Phoenix journals provide invaluable insights into truth of what happened and why. All of history, as we now know it, has been revised, rewritten, twisted and tweaked by selfishly motivated men to achieve and maintain control over other men. When one can understand that everything is comprised of energy and that even physical matter is coalesced energy, and that all energy emanates from God's thought. One can accept the idea that the successful focusing of millions of minds on one expected happening will cause it to happen. If the many prophecies made over thousands of years are accepted, these are the end times, specifically the year 2000, the second millennium, etc. That would put us in the sorting period and only a few short years from the finish line. God has said that in the end times would come the word, to the four corners of the world, so that each could decide his her own course toward, or away from, divinity based upon truth. So, God sends his host's messengers to present that truth. This is the way in which he chooses to present it, through the Phoenix journals. Thus, these journals are truth which cannot be copyrighted, they are compilations of information already available on earth, researched and compiled by others, some, no doubt, for this purpose, which should not be copyrighted. Commander Hatton, the primary author and compiler, insisted that no copyrights be applied for and, to our knowledge, none were. Therefore, these journals are not copyrighted except Sipapu Odyssey which is fiction. The Phoenix Journals, known as the Holy Books of the Lighted Realms are writings of truth for the people of our world, and are for our guidance through these end times on our planet. Received during the 1990s from Creator God via radio transmission from the Phoenix Starship, under the command of Giliagus Ceres Hatton, commander of the Pleiadian Star Fleet. If the truth is to reach the four corners of the world, it must be freely passed on. It is hoped that each reader will feel free to do that, keeping it in context, of course.